Hello, hello everyone. Um, once again, you're welcome to another live conversation with me, your host, Nikki Verd. And today I wanted to speak on this topic about imposter syndrome, the battle against imposter syndrome. It's one of the topics that is rarely spoken about, but something that a lot of us suffer from. And we suffer in silence. And sometimes we think we are the only ones going through this or experiencing these emotions and these feelings, you know, but uh, far from the truth, we are not the only ones. Um, and so, yeah, it's an interesting topic today. As always, I think I always say my topics are interesting <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> but I think they are. So I feel like we should have a conversation about imposter syndrome, especially as we are about to enter into the new year. And a lot of us are having uh, great plans and we want to achieve our dreams. We want to achieve so much and do something different with our lives, right? So I felt that this is a topic that needs to be addressed. This is a conversation that needs to be had or to be had. And uh, since it is something that we are all battling with, I felt, well, I can't wait till I get it right before I share my thoughts on it. So I thought I would just come online and, you know, share uh, some of my experiences around this and Hopefully, um, someone joins me in the comment sec section and, and we, we pick the conversation from there. You know, some time ago, I had a, a conversation with one of my good friends, right? And we were talking about, you know, chasing dreams and making a difference in the world. We were sharing about our fears and our struggles in achieving these dreams. And suddenly, this topic of imposter syndrome came up, right? And he explained how this thing has kept him from doing what he really loves doing and what he really wants to do, you know, because of this constant feeling of, um, I'm not good enough, you know, you know he, he says like, he constantly feels like he's not talented and he's not talented enough. <laughs> I hope English doesn't disappoint me today. <laughs> you know, these constant constant feelings of, uh, you know, he's not well articulated because he's also in the public speaking um, industry or space, uh, so to say. Um, he told me how he even went back to school and graduated with um, an MBA, a master's degree, and he has signed up with certain uh, online courses uh, with his mentor, but still he feels that he's still not good enough, right? And so um, as I was listening to him, I'm, I was like, oh my God, imposter syndrome is a real bitch. Hey, did I say that loud? <laughs> oh, okay, forgive my French, but that is really how I felt, you know, as I was listening to him sharing this as like imposter syndrome is a real bitch because this is really something that a lot of people are struggling with and I and I really you know struggle with myself you know so and as we were having the conversation I, I was also saying sharing you know with him and saying that this is really something I struggle with myself and that I battle imposter syndrome on a daily basis. And somehow I was shocked by his response to me, right? He, he, I, I was shocked by the, res the response to what I said. And he responded and said, no, Nikki, you have achieved a lot of things. You can't possibly be suffering from <laughs> imposter syndrome. And I was looking at him like, what? What have I achieved exactly that you think will suddenly cure me? from this thing, which is to me, it feels like it's, 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 a, it's a human 
you know, something that all human beings have to deal with, right? So he went on to explain, you know, he wrote a book. He said, I wrote a book and, I, and I'm a public speaker. I, I've spoken at events uh, more than him. And I have um, even done a TED, a TED event talk. And I was like, wow, is that how you feel about it? Because to me, imposter syndrome doesn't care about your achievements, right? So... If we go by that narrative, I was like, look at, look at you. You have an MBA. You have other degrees under your name. I don't have any certificate, any certificate, so to say, other than my birth certificate to my name. That was really what I explained. So if I am looking at it that way, you are more equipped than me to face some of these things, right? I don't, I don't have a degree. I, I don't have an MBA. Um, so... I don't have a mentor as in the way he puts it where you you go and take these online courses with your mentor and these are things he's done right so we're having these conversations and we're laughing but nonetheless there was so much that i was learning from that conversation that no amount of achievements will completely push away the imposter syndrome okay um because there are people that think because i wrote a book i'm suddenly elevated to God's status and I no longer have struggles. I no longer deal with things that everyone deals with. And it's not really true. That is not true at all. Um, I have this one friend as well. Okay, he'll probably watch this, this, this live video. And I remember every time I ask him, hey, can I pick your brains on something? And I'll tell him what I wanted to pick his, pick his brains about. His response is usually, mm -hmm. if Nikki is struggling with this, it means the rest of us are doomed. And I'm like, what did you just say? So you think I don't have any struggles? You don't, you don't think I have any self-doubt? You don't think I struggle to post things online? You don't think I struggle to write? And sometimes he says it, he says, yeah, he says these things as a joke, right? But it's not far from how some people perceive me or how some people look at me because I, I wrote a book. They just feel that I have all the answers. They just feel that I know everything. <laughs> they just feel that I'm above self-doubt. I'm above uh, imposter syndrome. And that is not true at all, you know. And here's another scenario, right? This is quite a funny one. This one is hilarious. Um, even when it comes to dating, right, I have... I've had experiences where I met a guy and we're talking and I get to introduce myself, you know, when it comes to, okay, what do you do for a living? I get to introduce myself. Okay. I am a writer, I'm an author and things like that. And suddenly the atmosphere shifts and then I don't get to hear from this person again. And because it's happened over and over, I'm like, does it have to do with something I said about being a writer and being an author? And then I shared it with my sister, a good friend of mine also. And she said, Nikki, stop telling this man that you are a writer. <laughs> Just introduce yourself as a hairdresser <laughs> so that they don't run away. Anyway, that was really funny to me. And if you think that I should start introducing myself to men as a hairdresser, you can comment, <laughs> leave a comment below. <laughs> I still find it funny when I tell the story today. It's quite a conversation for another day. That in itself deserves a live show, right? But I don't know how to do a talk on that, but we'll see. Anyway, so the reason for these stories is really to, to speak to the fact that imposter syndrome doesn't care about your achievements. In spite of how other people can put you on a pedestal right up there, right? And they make you feel like you are right up there. They make you feel like you are both self-doubt, you are both failure. And all of this, imposter syndrome never leaves the room. It's always hanging by like, hey, you think because you wrote a book, you're going to write another one? That's literally what I battle with all the time. You know, there are these thoughts you feel like, oh, because you wrote a book, you think now you know everything. It feels like these thoughts, like, you know, some people think because I wrote a book, then writing the next one becomes easier, which is not true. I've, I've currently, I'm currently working on the second one. I've been working on it for a while, but I feel like, oh my God, why is this thing so hard? And there's that voice at the back of my mind, right? 
So you think because you wrote the book, you're just going to get up and write another one. So imposter syndrome does not care about your achievements. It doesn't care about my achievement. It's not just going to suddenly disappear simply because you've achieved so and so. If it's something you are not conscious about and you are not fighting about, then it's not going to go anywhere. All right. Um, so the reason I'm sharing these stories, you know, is to let you know that even if people elevate and put you on a pedestal, imposter syndrome is still going to whisper, whisper certain things in your ear that are not pleasing. Okay. And most time when I get an invite to speak at, at an event, right? For those who know my story, you guys know that I found myself in the tech space, in the technology space, and I speak about digital skills, digital transformation, emerging technologies, the impact of emerging technologies uh, on work, on society, on the future of work and things like that. Those are things that I speak about. And sometimes when I get an invite to speak on these topics, immediately I get that sudden fear and that sudden self-doubt, like today is the day you get found out. <laughs> today is the day you get exposed, you know, as a fraud. Like, what, Nikki, what do you know about technology? Like, these are thoughts I constantly have to fight with, all right? And, well, the honest truth is that it's a constant battle, and sometimes I feel like I'm not really winning this battle. However, I've gotten to that pl place where I'm trying to understand what this monster is. I call it a monster, right? I want to have an understanding how it operates, how does it work, what are the symptoms, when does it show up, so that I can recognize that voice when it comes up and immediately try to silence it, rather than just saying, well, I think this thing is undefeated, okay? So the more I understand it, the more I feel like I have some sort of a hold over this, the more I feel like I have some sort of control over it, and that is really what I wanted to share in this live um, conversation, okay? Um, Imposter syndrome doesn't really care about your achievements and no one is above self-doubt. No one is constantly winning. No one is constantly above their game. No one is constantly, you know, on top of their game all the time. Many people, many of us are fighting with this on a daily basis. And for those who don't even understand what, um, what imposter syndrome is all about, the simplest definition about imposter syndrome um, is defined as you know, doubting your abilities and feeling like a fraud, the feeling like you are a fraud and you are going to be found out, you're going to be discovered, or your weaknesses are going to be exposed. That's really the, in simplest, in the simplest terms of it. That's really what imposter syndrome is all about. You know, it refers to someone who feels that they are not as capable as other people think they are, and. Imposter syndrome re involves feelings of self-doubt and you feel the feelings of self-doubt and personal incompetence is at the forefront. In spite of how many people praise you and celebrate you and shower you with compliments, you constantly feel like, oh my God, I'm about to be exposed. <laughs> oh my God, I don't know nothing. That is really why... Um, imposter syndrome is all about in, in spite of the evidence that you are talented in spite of the evidence that you are gifted in spite of the evidence that you are really good at what you do imposter syndrome constantly tells you that you are a fraud so and that is something you need to be aware of so the more you understand it the more you learn and the more you have even the basic understanding about what this thing is all about the better chance you have at beating it right someone asked a question in the say in the comments uh, that those believing in yourself makes your dream come true. Well, the, believing in yourself, it doesn't automatically make your dreams come true, but it, 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 it gets you there. It's, it's better than doubting yourself when you have dreams, okay? It's believing you can do it gets you halfway, at least. That is, it's way better than thinking or believing that you are, you are doomed or something. So self-belief is quite critical, it's quite important. It may sound like a cliche, but believe you me, it will, it will take you places. It will get you into uh, rooms that otherwise you will not be able to get into if you don't have that self-belief. I believe that 
some of the things that I've been able to achieve has been because I believed in myself somehow. I don't drown myself in these doubts. These are constant thoughts that I fight with on a daily, but I don't drown myself in those thoughts in that I don't, I don't allow myself to just get drowned in them. Okay. I fight them. So to answer your question, yes, self-belief, those get you achieving your dreams. Sometimes talent is not enough. You can see some people who are the most talented and they are behind because they don't, they lack that self-belief to push themselves forward. There are some people that have even the resources, you know, to start a business, to do something different with their lives. They have the resources, they have the connection, but they lack self-belief. And hence, they don't go anywhere. They have the support structure, they have the family support system, but because they lack self-belief, they don't go anywhere. So self-belief is quite important. It's not something to take for granted, even though we constantly like say, and it then becomes to sound like a cliche, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. It is quite critical for anybody who wants to really make an impact in the world. Ah, non vula violet. Thank you so much for the stars. I'm literally still learning how to use this stars thing on Facebook. I don't yet know how it works. I recently registered for it and I'm seeing you have sent me, oh my God, 99 stars. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So for the people watching this, send me more stars. I'm still learning how it works. <laughs> so thank you so much, Nambula. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's been a while. I hope you're doing well. Uh, so yeah, this conversation around imposter syndrome, I wanted us to have it. It's probably going to be in, I'm probably going to complete it in another video because I want to touch on different characteristics of of um, of the imposter syndrome so that we can have an understanding of what it is. You cannot fight a battle you don't understand, right? So that is one of the things, I one of the key things I talk about even in my book. You cannot fight a battle you don't understand. And so when something constantly shows up, especially in my own life, like this imposter syndrome, I try to understand it because I know that it is from understanding what this thing is all about that I will be able to win the battle. So I'm not sharing it with you as an expert. I'm not sharing it with you as someone who has arrived. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing my experience so that together we can figure this thing out. We can figure it out how to beat it, how to overcome it, especially as we all step into 2023. 20, uh, there is something that Vusit and Bequire said that resonated with me so much. Um, just give me a second to read it. He said that, High achievers are high achievers because they doubt themselves, okay? And because they doubt themselves, they prepare more, they work more harder, they commit even more times than ordinary people. So because you think that someone is a high achiever, don't think that self-doubt is above them, don't think that imposter syndrome is above them, right? He said high achievers are high achievers because they doubt themselves and this self-doubt pushes them so when you understand that this thing is always there and it's always knocking at your door, then you have a better chance of beating it. You have a better chance of understanding it. Rather than beating yourself around the bush, you don't even understand what it is. You can't win a battle. You don't understand, right? Again, you cannot win a battle. You don't understand. So understanding how imposter syndrome operates, understanding the symptoms, understanding the different types of imposter syndrome will help you to win the battle against this imposter syndrome because it's serious. If you allow these thoughts of I'm not good enough or I cannot achieve this, you will never get there. One of the affirmations that have been helping me get over this is the affirmation, the one line affirmation that says, nothing is too good for me. I belong in any room I walk into. Nothing is too good for me. I belong in any room I walk into because there are certain invites I get into certain events and I feel like, oh my God, I don't belong here. I had to catch myself thinking like that. And I had to in like immediately start fighting that. I was like, no, nothing is too good for me. And I belong in any room I walk into. So when you are aware of your thoughts, which brings us back again to curiosity, right? The conversation we've had in the previous videos, where I was talking about emotional curiosity, asking yourself, why are you feeling this way? Why are you having this thought? When you start questioning, 
asking those type of questions, you will get into the roots of certain things that are hindering you. So if I allow myself to constantly feel like I don't belong in this room, I don't belong in this event, there's time I find myself among CEOs that I otherwise would never even be able to say hello to in real life. Okay, and I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, how did I get here? What am I doing here? And then suddenly I was like, Nothing is too good for me. I belong here. And sometimes people ask questions to me as though I am the ex expert on a, on a topic. And immediately I feel so frightened. But I remind myself, hey, Nikki, you can do this. You just need to do research. You just need to learn. You just need to understand. You can do this. Okay. There are certain times I'm given topic. I remember one of my um, my booking agent, uh, when we were giving a topic, a topic for a conversation I was supposed to speak at this, I mean, an event I was supposed to speak at this year. And she got frightened and she was telling me, Nikki, don't you think this is out of, uh, out of, uh, out of my league or something? She didn't really say league, but she was like, don't you think we should not go for this? I was like, hey, I'm already doubting myself. Please don't act to it. You should be encouraging me. <laughs> And we took it and we did well. You know, we did our research and all of that. And we did well at the event. So really, absolutely, yes, nothing is too good for me. I'm, I'm glad Nomvula is repeating that in the comments. Nothing is too good for me until you begin to speak like that. This imposter syndrome will, will you know, steal opportunities from you. It will take away things that actually belong to you. So begin to speak like that. Nothing is too good for you. If, if it came to you, it means it means God wanted you to have it, okay? So we are going to figure this thing out together. My next video, I'm still going to be touching on this imposter syndrome. I'm probably gonna give different characteristics of it so that we can understand it better because it's something I've been studying. For me to beat this thing, I need to study what and understand what it is. I need to get into the roots of it. And I want us to get to the roots of it together. I want to add value to my audience. And I want everyone you know, that is part of my network to have an understanding of what this thing is, what this monster is and how they can overcome it. So thank you all for being here and thank you for the for the stars you've sent once again. Thank you for those who have watched the live. I'm going to end it here and hopefully tomorrow we'll continue on this conversation about imposter syndrome. Thank you, Mezo. Thank you, Auntie Colette. She is here. <laughs> My brother's wife is right here. And um, thank you who again was here. Let me see. Uh, Dimpo, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Um, I appreciate your contributions in the comments. And thank you for watching. We'll catch up again soon, hopefully tomorrow. Bye.